Hello, this is Clarence Moy with the Words Daily here with Julia co-star Fran Kranz, who hey. also delivered the brilliant mass earlier in the year. Fran, very nice to Thank meet you. you. Thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I um, uh, I love that movie, but it's been overwhelming um, mm -hmm. recently with what what's yeah. happened in our country in, in the country. And uh, uh, yeah, so so it's tough. It was a really hard movie to move on from. And now I find myself sort of overwhelmed and kind of sickened by what's happening and I had kind of one day grab a toy, you know, down the rabbit hole again, because I sort of spent four years doing that and then try, try to sort of pull myself out of it and say, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you, you're, I'm, you, I've been trying to kind of move forward with my life and work on other stuff. And, um, but I've just cared so deeply about this and it's just devastating, but thank you. It, it means a lot to me. Appreciate the movie. Yeah. Outside yeah. of acting, how do you follow that up with another, with your next directorial effort? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's such a monumental, huge film to, to, to start with, you know, I, the, the yeah, I don't, matter. I, you know, no, I, uh, uh, I think about that quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you so far, I've, I've followed it up by doing nothing, just feeling a ton of anxiety and not doing anything. <laughs> um, no, I, I look, there are, I realized, you know, I, I don't think I can make a movie that's such a long journey. It's so much work that I don't think I can do something if I don't have some kind of equal or very similar level of passion for it. So if finding that and, you know, look, I feel like I've only been a director for a year. So I'm kind of figuring out what that kind of means to me now that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, lucky enough to sort of have people interested in me and, and other scripts and sort of can, you know, would, would you take a look at this and what do you think? And so it's kind of getting to know yourself again, because as an actor, you know, I'm used to sort of just trying to get a job, you know, and as a director, it's not, it's a very different thing. You know, I, I need to care deeply and uh, certainly whatever, you know, one day it'd be fun to make a, just a comedy or a, you know, a thriller or, but, but in following up mass, I'm just not in a place in a state, you know, emotionally um, to do something that isn't on, you know, sort of on a uh, important on some kind of human level, or that means something to me as a, you know, maybe it's not necessarily social justice, but, um, but, but, but something, you know, something that, that, that has carries similar kind of uh, weight and themes. I think I, I feel like there's no way out of it until I kind of do another one, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, you've been able to, to balance your career between theater, between directing, between acting and, and yeah. film and television. And now you've most recently been seen on HBO Max in Julia. And of course, yeah. look where I am. I'm in Julia's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, sorry, but I, know, I feel like I can't. I was I, you, I when we got on the Zoom, I did it. I, you had to help me out there. I, uh, <laughs> it's funny. You know, I went to the Smithsonian when we wrapped Julia. I went immediately to do press for Mass and I was in Washington, D.C., and I went to the Smithsonian and it was closed. It was like under renovation, Julia's, Julia's kitchen. So, uh, but I know our set, you know, and I certainly, I spent, I spent maybe not a lot of time, maybe just one scene, I guess, in Julia's kitchen, but I hung out there. I mean, you know, our holding area was like in the living room, you know, so, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, um, I'm very familiar with it, even if it took me a second. <laughs> well, now I'm feeling wildly insecure that perhaps I've grabbed the wrong photo and it's just some random person's kitchen. <laughs> and I've told, like, I That's talked to Dan and, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Chris and I had this on they're like oh it's Julia's kitchen I'm like okay. yeah no it it, it does you know it, it it certainly does I would what I what I immediately thought like um I just thought the this this strikes me as further along you know maybe mm -hmm. the 70s or the eight who knows Later. you know yeah. yeah 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 so more going on in in the series Julia you play uh Russell Morash um, yeah. who is the um a producer on a local cable channel where Julia gets her start with the French chef um, yeah. What is it about this role that spoke to you? Oh, can, you know, there's so many things. So can I just go on for a while? I mean, Absolutely. I, uh, you know, look, I think, look, the sh I'll say this sort of first. I mean, I think the show um, to a degree, you know, sort of in, for dramatic purposes embellishes to what degree he was a real source of conflict and, and what kind of real obstacle he really was for Julia. Um, but that's fun. You know, it's sort of fun to be, 
uh, you know, he's obviously, he's not a bad guy, he's not an antagonist, but it's sort of, it's, it's fun to be a source of conflict and to have that kind of difference in vision, you know, and play that in opposition to her. Um, that, that immediately struck me as something that I don't get opportunities to do and it felt different. Um, the, other than that, I mean, uh, he, he's kind of this remarkable person. I'll admit I didn't know um, who he was at first, but obviously I did, you know, your basic internet stalking and I read a couple of books and um, I was, I admired him. Um, I think he's won 17, something of ridiculous daytime Emmys. You know, he's the creator of shows in his own right, This Old House, Victory Garden. Um, he had this incredible work ethic um, that was just very clear and just reading about him and doing even minimal research. Um, and he had real artistic vision, you know, he was an artist in his own right. And, you know, it's, it, I, look, I think it's true that he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't know if it was the right decision, right? He's sort of like, I don't, I don't, I don't find cooking shows compelling, you know, so, so I'm not sure our, our audiences will. Um, I think he, I read something funny and I'm probably butchering it, but he had some, some line. He was also very he, witty. I mean, he's kind of a colorful person in his own right. And uh, he said something to the effect of like, cooking was about as relevant to me as Norse poetry spoken in the original Scandinavian. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And like, he just had like a lot of quips and a lot of remarks that you you felt like, I, I like this guy, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's tough and he can be direct and sort of combative in order to get the job done, you know, in order to sort of get the best vision. But, you know, uh, I, I, so there were things that I admired and if it, and if it was sort of done in this um, initially antagonistic way, it was sort of all the better for it. You know, let's, right. let, let, you know, you want sort of drama and you want conflict. And I didn't, I don't, I don't get those opportunities. So this was something I, I was excited about in so many different facets, you know, to start playing. Yeah. When you were sitting down and trying to figure out who he was and you had done your internet, your Google stalking and your <laughs> research and, yeah, yeah. and other research, of course. Yeah. Um, what were some things that you, grabbed onto that you said okay in this script this is who he is as a person like what helped define him as a character for you yeah interesting I you know so he and his wife went on you know they really kind of drank the kool-aid right Marion Marion Mirage they opened a restaurant in Nantucket I think I, I, I'm embarrassed you'd think I would know this I feel like if she wasn't a James Beard winner she was like a nominee you know like she was she, she became a really outstanding cook in her own right cookbooks they had this restaurant uh, no longer there, but I think I, I know it was successful for a long time in Nantucket, Straight Wharf uh, restaurant in Nantucket. And, um, and the fact that, it, you know, he created this old house, Victory Garden, that, that, that he was a creator and a builder. And I, I sort of admired, I'm nothing like this. I'm not handy at all, but I liked the fact that this guy was a hands-on artist. I mean, literally, I, he was handy. You know what I mean? This guy could construct things and conceive of things in practical ways and, and had, had a, a sort of uh, a real tangible and productive way, efficient way of kind of realizing visions, you know? Mm -hmm. And for this, this personality like Julia, this incredible personality and it's sort of an idea that was not necessarily totally new of a cooking show, but a kind of a new version and a sort of new spirit to it. You know, I, I think, I think in re you needed someone like him, you know, you sort of needed someone to sort of perceive and figure out, okay, how does this work? You know, like I'm not totally, I don't necessarily know if I get it, but how, how can, what are the nuts and bolts of this? And you get to see little bits of that in the show and how he develops you know, the camera angles and how we're actually in going mirror. to, sh in the mirror and the, yeah. exactly, the mirror. And um, I admired that. I mean, look, you know, uh, it, it, it's the, the Russ, the Julia was the first audition I had after directing Mass. And I think there was something to, you know, coming home, coming back to LA and sort of, sort of being a director. I didn't realize um, how much was involved in post-production. I had really done nothing at that point, but, you know, I felt like I sort of, you know, done this, you know, entered this sort of new chapter in my career and this role to show up as a director and a producer and to sort of quickly learn, um, you know, how much I kind of admired and looked up to this guy and how much he had done that, that was, that was it. I mean, you look, you want to really love and connect, right, with your characters, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, 
that became really easy, you know, and that, that was something else. And so I'm rambling, I guess, but it was fun to watch his shows uh, as a director and sort of try to, um, you know, kind of work backwards into sort of his thinking of like the mm -hmm. shot selection or how he made those choices. And, and then obviously hand in hand with research and some books that were more about Julia, but of course covered Russ extensively in the shows and learning, you know, other ways in which he kind of creatively brought the show to life when they faced sort of challenges, you know? Right. Well, I love yeah. how solving the problem of the mirror getting yeah, that yeah. angle from up top is what brought him into the show is what gave him the energy and yeah. the enthusiasm about yes. being yeah. engaged with the French chef before he was just kind of like, eh, you know, you do yeah. your thing, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> this is not my thing. But that, that solving that problem absolutely brought him in. It's those discoveries, right? It's yeah. those, um, I mean, look, I, th I think of my actor first and as a, I think of myself as an actor first and foremost. And so you, you that's, that, that, that making your own discovery as opposed to sort of someone telling you what it is or what to do mm -hmm. that's always going to feel and have more authenticity and and more of a, a a deeper connection to to the performer and the audience you know when these are these self-made discoveries right and this is a guy who said like i'm not sure about this you know and uh to 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 make those discoveries on your own and kind of and reveal the potential of the show it, it creates an ownership. It creates, you're a participant in this whole new way. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And that artistic process is just, you know, obviously it's my life now, <laughs> you know? And uh, so those were really, um, I mean, fun. You know, the show is obviously so much fun and funny and charming, but those are the things that, 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 that attach it and ground it to something, you know, more human and really kind of poignant, you know? So you mentioned there's a massive difference between you and Russ and that you are not Andy and he was Andy. <laughs> Were there yeah. any similarities between the two of you? Um, there's clearly a, a, a passion, you know, there's clearly, I, I, I read a lot about his work ethic and that he had that something, something like he had no false sense of entitlement. And maybe I do, <laughs> maybe that's not such a similarity. <laughs> maybe I'm spoiled or privileged, but um it's it's look it's a hard job you know producing is very hard you know let alone directing but producing is can be thankless a little bit you know i mean a bit you know very often you know the the show comes out and it's it's julia that's the face and so you know and and you know the, there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes and i i I felt like I had lived that in my own life just recently or was living it, you know, as, uh, as we continued to shoot, you know, we obviously got delayed multiple times because of COVID. And so my entire post-production of, you know, editing and delivering it and selling it to distributors, all of this was in sync with filming Julia and Russ. And there's no doubt the passion and one part of my life and the intensity and the work, um, and the frustration, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, imb was imbued and sort of added to my sense of what this performance should be and who this guy was and, 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 and the work that he's under. Um, also, and, in, in, you know, having a child, you know, where you get to see, we get to see the growth of their family and this marriage and this man as a father. Um, and, you know, I, I have a five-year-old daughter, you know, so there were so, there were so many things that felt uh aligned you know now that i mean now that you mentioned it i'm like wow huh you know <laughs> um but uh yeah and and uh, yeah those 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 were all things that felt there was there was a, a a real synchronicity that's empowering and inspiring and and sort of and motivating you know yeah and, and watching the show, it was, um, I never like watching myself anymore. I'm, I, it's hard to get me to watch anything anymore. <laughs> it becomes so cynical. I loved it. Like, I couldn't believe it was such a, it was such a beautiful, I don't want to say surprise, because I knew it was good. I mean, I knew, and I, I watched Sarah and David and all these incredible people in the show, and it's great creators, and it was shot well. The production value was just through the roof. So I, I knew what it was, what I was going to get, but I, I actually enjoyed myself, and that never happens. <laughs> and I think a lot of it is because I like him. I, I love, I really love this guy, and believe in this guy, 
and what he brings to this show, despite his sort of misgivings or apprehension about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can't yeah. imagine watching yourself on a TV show. I, I, I cringe every time I do one of these interviews and I have to watch myself back. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm obviously the worst part of the show, but I still no, enjoyed not it. At all. <laughs> not at all. Oh, yeah. But it, <laughs> yeah. So um, one thing that's really interesting, all of these characters through the series, they change, you know, that, that and that must be really fun for an actor to play. They are definitely not yeah. the same people at the end as they were at the beginning. But one thing that I found really interesting, I was talking to Brittany Bradford, who plays Alice, yeah. and she was talking about as Alice got more confident in her in her uh, place within the studio, she ch she started to subconsciously change the way she carried herself, the, the way that she walked into a room, the way that she made eye yeah. contact uh -huh. with people. Do you think Russell, in, in your performance as Russell, did you go through similar sort of physical changes in the way you were presenting him? I didn't necessarily think... That's interesting. That's amazing. I didn't know that she was doing that. Um, but she's such an impressive, impressive, impressive uh, actor and person. I'm not. I'm not surprised. She was. She was thinking about things like that and, and including that those kind of decisions in her performance. Um, you know, I, I look. I felt sort of physically very much in line with this person. Um, I do think. Speaking of this sort of the, the course of this, uh, the character arc and the arc of the show is sort of. You know, Alice, it's kind of a good to use her. Alice comes, becomes more anchored and more confident at WGBH and has more and more purpose as the show goes on. And I mean, literally takes on the role of producer. She gets that, she gets that job she wanted and she has sort of uh, the attachment she was looking for there, you know? And Russ is sort of, despite how he speaks about, you know, wanting to do something in his mind, more meaningful, educational right. documentaries, um, making sh these shows that he feels like matter, right? Um, that 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 can help people and sort of help society or have conversation. People can ha have these uh, productive conversations. The, the more he's allowed to do that, he almost becomes more sort of untethered and unanchored to the station, you know. And I I think there's a kind of this sort of I think it's really beautiful in in this this the, the last episode where you you can see there's a, even if it's unconscious, you know, there's a, there's a nervousness about sort of, okay, you've been given a kind of a blank check a little bit, you know, you we will take you off, Julia, here you go, go for it. And it, it's, he says as much, you know, it's, it's strange to miss something you didn't think you wanted, you know, and that kind of when, you know, the, 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 the sort of the fear and it's exciting, but the concern of sort of like, okay, now the world's wide open. Who am I? You know, what right. am I going to do with it? And I, I, I sort of love that. And I don't, I don't think I, I mean, I know I consciously didn't think about anything sort of physically, but I sort of love the idea that, you know, you, you could kind of begin as sort of a bit of a curmudgeon and sort of, you know, it, it, he was pretty self-assured and, and sort of not buying this thing and to find himself at a place of not being sure, you know, and, 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 and uh, having to sort of rethink a lot of things in his life. I, 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 I love that. So I love this idea that, you know, if she's feeling more anchored at WGA, WGBH by the end, he's not, you know, right. he's, he's feeling like, I'm not, I'm not really sure who I am as an artist, you know, and look, we know, we know he ends up there just in real life. Uh, we know they have a long career and we know that he follows so quite, you know, literally in her footsteps with his own, you know, do it yourself shows and educational shows. Um, it's going to be really exciting to find that kind of see that odyssey, you know, to see him kind of have to go a long way to sort of go a short distance. You know, I think that it's going to be a, a sort of beautiful journey that hopefully we get, you know, maybe even a third season to accomplish, you know. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That's really intriguing. Yeah. I um, yeah. one thing that I did notice was in in the scenes with his wife and Russ, with Russell's wife, he is yeah. more at ease with her. The more that he sort of adopts Julia's mentality, or you know, that particularly I'm thinking about the scene where you two are cooking breakfast together, and all of a sudden it's just like this seamless, like yeah. you know, sous chef and chef action going on there. Yeah, 
That was, I think that was the hardest scene I've ever shot in my life. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had a, no, I literally, I'd go up to our script supervisor and, and be like, did I, did I say the lines? And like, I'm not even like, did I say them correctly? Like, was I speaking? Did I say anything? <laughs> like I was so focused on the food and I realized, you know, this is the last episode and I realized, oh my God, Sarah does that every day. Like that, that, that and she's incredible that she's doing that all the time. And uh, it's hard multitasking in, as an actor, you, you're it just it's so many things shut off and it's weird how hard that is but to cook and act like you're good at it um yeah that was challenging but yeah look, no look Aaron and Aaron Newfer who plays Marion is fantastic and I think we have fun chemistry and I think that's a hey, look that's a really it's it's a really smart observation I'm sure it's possible I could have articulated that at some point myself or sort of noticed <laughs> that myself but I think you, I've, I'm impressed you pointed that out it, it was it's not necessarily top of mind to me Look, they, 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 like I said, they, they are sort of acolytes. Is that the word? Like they, you know, she grows, grows into this great chef. They go hang out at her home in the, in France. You know, they, these are close, close friends their whole lives after this. And I think they had an amazing marriage, but, um, you know, they continue to, right. They, they right. are, they are still an amazing marriage and, you know, we all know how, how that's difficult. And I think one of the things that is, you know, it, 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 what you're pointing out, which I don't think I recognize, and I'm going to steal it, that was good, but that it's, they, they grow together, you know what I mean? So they're, they work very well, sort of pre-Julia, and, you know, with the casserole, and Russ, I know, I read, he said that she would, you know, her, she'd go to a party and bring Frank and beans, you know, that, that, that they're not these, you know, cooks that they become. Right. So they the growing together is kind of a lot of what marriage is all about or any good relationship and sort of growing and supporting one another. And so I hadn't sort of noticed that, that sort of Julia is, um, she's, she's structuring that in ways that no one's necessarily conscious of, you know, that, right. that they're, they get to sort of evolve as people um, and it works and it works and it's a really beautiful lasting thing, you know? Yeah. So um, last question for you. Are you going to France to visit Simca in season two? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I um, no, it's so funny because everybody's really excited to go. And uh, so I've gotten like texts from members of the crew being like, we're going to France. I'm like, I'm not going to France. And like, yeah, that it's, <laughs> that it's awkward. It's like, oh, oh, it's just, See you in Boston, you know, like not quite as exciting, <laughs> not quite as exciting as Paris and the South of France. Yeah, no, they're shooting, uh, they're, they're shooting almost a month. Yeah. in uh, France, Paris and the uh, South and Provence, uh, which is a terrible place to be in July, obviously. And uh, uh, so, yeah, no, it's tough, but Hey, they just weren't there yet, you know? Um, but I have made sure I am finding, I'm going to get all kinds of evidence for Russ making it to her home in the south of france so if we get a third season i'm gonna be like no 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 you have to this is not factual i was there i was there i was having a great time so <laughs> so we'll see but no sadly I, I won't be i'll be back in boston making documentaries or trying you know. so that is that what we'll explore with russ um in future in the next season is i don't season. you know i don't i'm so excited to read i you know, we all just hung out in New York and I think I might be making this up, but you know, look, they're writing and I think they've finished maybe three or four of them, you know, of the, mm -hmm. of the scripts and it'll be another eight episodes from what I understand. And yeah, Julia is going to, you know, she'll be working on her second book with Simca. Um, so you're going to get a lot of time in France with uh, Sarah and Isabella Rossellini, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, I'll be back in Boston. And, I, and, and look, I mean, look, we, we know this is no spoiler. We know Russ stays in public television and stays with Julia in the long course of his career. And so how they get there will be very, very exciting. But I know we have so many incredible guest stars who I know are all pretty much slated to come back. Great directors. It's going to be a really, it's going to be a really, really fun reunion. I mean, I know tiny little details, but the, the truthfully, like, I'm just excited to read it. You know, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see because um, I have so much trust in Daniel and Chris, Daniel Goldfarb and Chris Kaiser, you know, who, who, who are sort of our showrunners and creators, mm -hmm. right? And um, so, so I know we're in such good hands 
uh, I kind of just can't, I just kind of want to wait and uh, surprise myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I, I have to commend yeah. you. You have, you have carried the tradition of all of the actors that I've talked to for the show, having well, just this infectious joy about it. So I, I Oh, I, good. I oh yeah. 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 Working together. No, we love it. And I'll tell you, and we do, we do. We had to, and, and also with COVID, you know, it's hard it's hard shooting, shooting things has changed. You don't build an ensemble the same way. You don't, you know, I, you, I remember at the, you know, the rap party or there wasn't even a party. It's like, you, you, you see someone's face for the first time in six months because they've been wearing a mask. You know, I, there was a point at one point in a green room, I almost said to someone, who is this person that's in our, and you know, it's our sound engineer. So he's always oh. there. He just was eating something and I'd never seen his face before. I'm like, wait a minute, who's this person? Um, anyway, it's like, <laughs> it's weird. And so, but, but despite all that, despite all, and, you know, all that, we really got along and loved mm -hmm. each other and sort of figured out a way to hang out. And even as a crew, you know, sort of, had a wonderful chemistry and atmosphere on set and then there's also a kitchen there's like a big kitchen on set to make all the food and we have incredible people making this beautiful food and so you know you're hungry and you go get some really really good food yeah <laughs> it's a nice when place I, to work when i talked to dan and chris i was shocked to see to find out that you know to prepare for these roles you guys didn't even get the opportunity to have like a meal together like there was no there was no real bonding because of COVID. It was, it was insane. very strange. We were, you know, we, we were, it was the Friday before the Monday of the first day of shooting in March, 2020. And uh, we all got shut down and, you know, got the news. We never even made it to our table read. Um, so it was very, it was very strange, you know, so it was a lot of, you know, thankfully we were in Boston in the summer, so you could eat outdoors, you know, you, you could figure out, you know, we were going on, uh, you know, long walks and sailboats, <laughs> taking the little, the out of Boston Harbor, taking those sort of kind of those, those little tourist rides and stuff. It was great. So that, but, but um, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, actors find a way to form ensembles. It's sort of this natural instinct and impulse. And if you're wearing masks and sort of separated constantly, it's a challenge, but it's one that's, that's sort of overcome with, I think, the natural instinct to kind of get close and become a family, you know? Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. readily apparent from the show. I do think you guys are one that's of the good. best ensembles on television. So. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I Like I said, I'm the worst, but uh, they're so no. <laughs> They're amazing to watch. They're, they're really amazing to watch. And David Hyde Pierce might be the funniest person I've ever met. I say he's he's like time travel funny. And that it feels as if he went to the future, heard the joke and came up with the best witty response and went back in time <laughs> to say it because it's far, it's just far too quick to make any sense otherwise. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're also uh, wonderful. Yeah. I love it. Well, friend, <laughs> yeah. thank you so much for the time. This was a great yeah. conversation. And, yeah. Thank uh, you, man. See thank you in, in uh, Julia season two. Thank you. And I hope the kitchen's real. I hope goes go start cooking. Yeah. Okay. Don't take it down. <laughs> yeah, well, I got another hour before I start, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, all right. All right um, take it easy. Yeah, take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.